Hey, what's up, guys? I realized there was not a video today, and I was just about to, like, go hit up Popeyes. Uh, I figured I would get this done. Uh, basically, I bought Darius Burst Chronicle Saviors. Um, I got some birthday money, so I decided to get it. One of the things about this game you have to understand is uh, you, there's not really a whole lot of legitimate complaints about it that you can find on the internet. Most of it is just people complaining about how high-priced it is, which <laughs> uh, it, the game definitely doesn't deserve. Uh, there's like a metric ass ton of content in this. Uh, even if you ignore, you know, the the arcade mode, where at least on the Vita, I hear that uh, pretty much any any monitor that's not like a super high resolution or you're not running a multi-monitor setup, it can be hard to see what's going on because they didn't like change the aspect ratio they kept the original aspect ratio so I have the Vita version so obviously it, it looks pretty pretty cramped on on a small Vita screen but they have this mode here where you can just uh, you know this is like an original mode that they made and there's I hear there's like 200 levels or something like that and this mode has the you know a matching aspect ratio so I've just been playing this mostly but there is a, a ton of content in this. Uh, the game definitely doesn't deserve the, the hate that it's getting. <laughs> like, uh, I think just, you know, digital games in general, it's just been a race to the bottom for a long time now. The past, like, five or six years, uh, people just don't want to pay full price for anything anymore. And it's a shame because this game has way more content than pretty much any other, you know, shmup that you can buy digitally. You know, most shmups are pretty much a one-and-done playthrough unless you're a hardcore player and you're going for scoring or one-credit attempts. Like, with this, there's a ton of content, and uh, you don't have to be, like, a master of the genre or anything like that. You can just kind of boot it up and play it. Now, in this mode, you get, like, uh, you get points to unlock ships. So if you don't spend your points, then you're stuck with whatever ship it, it gives you. But once you get these, you can also change it. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually just going to play through with the DLC. So you have AC mode, CS mode, and DLC mode. The arcade mode is basically, like I said, it's got a really cramped aspect ratio because they kept the original. They tried to emulate the triple monitor setup that was in the actual arcade cabinet. Uh, it's kind of a your mileage may vary kind of thing, you know, if you've got a crazy beast computer and you've got three monitors, I hear it's really awesome, but if you're stuck with one or you're playing on the Vita version like me, it can be pretty hard to, like, see the bullets and stuff like that, so I haven't even bothered with this mode yet. Luckily, there's uh, plenty of content in this, the CS mode and the DLC mode. So there's a bunch of, uh, of ships that they already have, like you can catch previews of them and how they'll play, their mechanics and stuff like that, but uh, most of them aren't out right now. You have Rayforce, Metal Black, and Night Striker. These are the free ones you can buy right now. I bought Rayforce because Rayforce is the only one that I'm, I've ever actually played. <laughs> uh, I never really played Metal Black or Night Strider or Night Striker. I've, I've heard of them, but I've never really had any experience. So I went ahead and bought this one. So what's cool about this DLC is you get three full areas that you can play through, three full, like, multi-tiered levels. But you also get these, uh, little defender levels, and you can play through most of the original, uh, levels from CS mode. Let's see if I can find a quick one to do here. I have to give a disclaimer, I'm not like really good at shmups, I mean I'm, I'm probably like average at best, so if I die, I die, this is not really kind of a high level gameplay video like the normal stuff that I do, I just kind of wanted to educate people on this. I was on the fence about this game for a long time because I couldn't really find any educated, like, intelligent reviews for it, mostly just people complaining about the price. Now, in terms of the technical stuff, which is mainly the point of this uh, Vita port review series that I do, uh, the game runs at 60 FPS. I have not seen it drop a single frame like the whole time that I've been playing. I've been playing this for the past like week and a half, pretty much every day. Which is definitely important in a game like this, where you have to make like split-second decisions and stuff like that. It's cool that you can just uh, not have to worry about that stuff and just enjoy the game the way it's meant to be enjoyed. 
I'd say the only issue with this port is not really an issue with the port itself, just kind of a design choice that they made to keep the original aspect ratio for the, uh, the arcade mode. Which is a shame because the arcade mode supposedly has like 2,000 levels or something crazy like that, so it's kind of, uh, you know, if you can put up with it, it's great, but if you're not able to, then you're missing out on a bunch of content. But that seems to be a complaint that uh, everybody has with the game, like, regardless of version. Bosses are pretty cool. I like the whole counter burst mechanic where if you use your laser right when they do theirs, it's kind of like a parry with a spaceship. Like, you get like a, a giant ass laser and it does tons of damage. It's probably uh, one of the hardest things I've had to learn in terms of playing this because I don't really have any past experience with this game. I'm gonna go ahead and end the, the port review series there. You got a pretty nice little glimpse of the level despite my shitty gameplay. <laughs> Yeah, the game runs rock solid, 60 FPS. Uh, if you have a Vita, I definitely recommend it. It's probably one of the best, uh, you know, bang for your buck, best value you can get in terms of like an uh, original native Vita game. Tons of content, really good performance. You just kind of have to ignore the people that are, uh, they're cheap asses, you know, they don't want to pay the full price. Like, I think it's only been on sale like once, at least on the, like the Sony storefront since it came out. I think it came out like six months ago or so. I think they've only had it on sale once, so it's kind of up to you. Uh, the Vita version's a pretty good deal because it's 40 bucks base price. Uh, the other one is like the PS4 and the PC versions are like $60 base price, I think. So uh, you know, it's like a $20 difference, like <laughs> 30% basically. So if you have a Vita, I recommend getting it on here. You know, the, the control pad and the, the analog stick are pretty good uh, control devices like to play the game and stuff like that. It's probably not as good as an arcade stick, but I mean, if unless you're going for like score and stuff like that, you probably won't care. At which case, you can just get one of the other two versions. Uh, unfortunately, you know how these Japanese publishers are. There is no cross buy or anything like that. So if you buy one version, you don't get the extra one. So unless you're planning on spending a hundred dollars, it's probably better to get like maybe the Vita version and the PC version because uh, at least with the PC version you have an, the option of getting like a, a cheaper Steam key from another external site or something like that. Like Green Man Gaming just had it on sale for like $20 yesterday. So uh, if you want to play like if you want to play like portable and you want to play at home, then it's probably better to get like the PC version when it's on sale and then get the Vita version just at base price or you can wait for a sale, but you know how it is with the Sony sales and stuff like that. You can be waiting like months for a game to go on sale. <laughs> it's like it's up to you. It's a really rock-solid port. Uh, it's got a lot of value. Uh, it really doesn't deserve all the hate it's getting just because it's not like a rock-bottom price. Like Most shmups are like $15, $20 base price, and you go through them like once or twice unless you're a hardcore player, in which case the, the price won't matter. You know, The hardcore shmup players will pay like $80 for a port in you know, a Japanese port. They'll even pay $100 or more for like a PCB to play it on a Super Gun or something like that. You know, if you're interested in that stuff, the price doesn't matter. The game really doesn't deserve all the hate it's getting. I'm really enjoying it. I've played it for I don't know how many hours and I've, I haven't even scratched the surface of how much content this game has. I, I could probably will be playing it on stream probably uh, maybe throughout the rest of this month since I don't have that much going on. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there. Uh, I do have some other Vita port review series in the works. Uh, I would like to do Crypt of the Necro Dancer, but I'm pretty bad at it right now, so I think I'm going to wait until I get a little better at it. Ninja Senki DX is a pretty awesome port too, but I don't know how much there is to say about it. 
uh, I bought one piece on the the sale a couple months ago for like my trips and stuff like that. I'll probably be covering that in the near future. And uh, that's pretty much all I've got down the pipeline for now. So I'll catch you guys uh, probably tomorrow. I may do more of this or maybe it might just be a stream bot or something like that. Catch you guys later. Peace.